All right, good evening and welcome to the Community First Career Exploration and Financial Literacy, Centers, Literacy Center here in Appleton, Wisconsin. I'm thrilled to be with you tonight for our second annual Junior Achievement of Northeast Wisconsin Young Entrepreneur Live competition. My name is Adam Sutter and I am the Regional Director for JA here in Northeast Wisconsin. But more importantly this evening, I will be your host for our competition. This year's competition is presented by Schneider. And today we have four young finalists from around the region who have risen to the top in their respective businesses. Over the next hour, you'll get to know each one of them and their success. Each will present to a panel of local celebrity judges. And yes, I am using that word again. So celebrity judges. There's a lot on the line tonight. Our finalists will walk away our grand prize of $2,500. But not everybody will go home empty-handed. Each of our other finalists will each take home $1,000 to be put back into their business. You're all gonna get something. So it'll be fun. We can applaud that, absolutely. And we'll also be giving away an Audience Choice Award worth $500. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. So first, I'd like to introduce you to our judges who have graciously joined us tonight to lend their experience. First, we have Amy Peach from the Venture Center at Fox Valley Technical College. Amy is an entrepreneur turned intrapreneur, currently serving as director of the Fox Valley Technical College Venture Center. Amy's passion is assisting entrepreneurs, small business owners, community and business leaders to launch and grow sustainable enterprises. Amy helps them to design their business models, develop their strategic plans, business plans, and innovative processes. The Fox Valley Tech Venture Center has trained thousands of people helping to launch and grow more than 600 businesses in Wisconsin and has developed a global network. Amy has also served as a board member for local, regional, and statewide organizations and has held leadership and executive committee roles as well. Our next judge tonight is Andrew Schmitz of Generator. Andrew is Managing Director of the US Venture Sustainability Accelerator powered by Generator. Andrew invests in early stage sustainability and or mobility focused startups and works with the startups intensively through a 12 week accelerator program designed to connect them with advisors and customers. Prior to joining Generator, Andrew founded and led several business to business software startups based out of Appleton. Welcome, Brian, or Andrew. Our next judge is Brian Stoltner from Schneider. Brian is Vice President of Strategy, Planning, and Architecture at Schneider, a premier provider of lo transportation, logistics, and intermodal services. In the role, Brian helps to lead the company's strategic technology, innovation, and digital efforts, in addition to portfolio and program management and enterprise architecture. Brian is Vice President of the Howard Spomico Education Foundation and also serves on several local boards that help drive innovation in the Northeast Wisconsin region. Our next judge is Karen Hoffman. Karen is a national board certified business and marketing teacher at Kimberly High School. Karen earned her bachelor's degree in business administration from UW Stevens Point, her master of business administration degree from UW Oshkosh, and her Master of Education degree from Concordia University. Prior to becoming a teacher, Karen was in the private sector for many years. Karen has taught various classes throughout her teaching career, including incubator EDU, personal finance, accounting, and marketing. Karen also serves as a YA coordinator for her district and as a DECA advisor. Thank you very much, Karen. And last but not least, we're joined by Tyrone Powell, Tyrone is the founder of UNEXT and a former UWGB men's basketball athlete. Born and raised in France, Tyrone moved to Wisconsin when in high school and is a graduate of UWGB just this last summer, so congratulations. Besides running his own startup, Tyrone is involved on the JA board and mentoring the next generation of entrepreneurs at local high schools. He was also recently named one of the Wisconsin under 25 tech leaders to watch by bizjournal.com. So thank you, judges, for joining us, our celebrity judges. We, we appreciate all of your time tonight and all the help you're gonna give these young folks 
as they share a little bit more about their businesses. The judges panel tonight will use four main criteria in judging the students. Their they are charisma slash hustle, business success and financials, your growth potential, and social involvement. Junior Achievement of Wisconsin is committed to pre preparing students for a prosperous financial future through programming in classrooms across the state and in learning what happens here or that happens here at our capstone facility. That work is not done alone. I want to acknowledge our presenting sponsor and big uh, supporter of JA throughout Northeast Wisconsin, Schneider. We now have a quick video to show you of the work that Schneider does as an organization. For nearly a century, Schneider has delivered the goods people count on every day. Goods that fuel America's economy. We integrate equipment, people, and technology to ensure freight arrives safely and on time. It's more than a job, it's a responsibility. One that's rooted in hard work, dedication, and innovation. All to help our customers and consumers achieve more. Safety always comes first at Schneider, and we go above industry standards because it's the right thing to do. That's what makes us one of the safest fleets on the road. Our best-in-class, highly trained drivers take pride in their professional skills, delivering a superior customer experience. Our engines steer the economy forward, so we stay focused on staying out in front. To do that, we put the power of Schneider to work. Moving freight across borders throughout North America. Using and developing technology to become safer, more efficient, and experts at finding answers to the toughest problems. We're also setting and exceeding sustainability goals that drive us toward a greener future. We do all this thanks to the unmatched passion of our associates who make it all possible. We are Schneider, always delivering, always ahead. I'd like to welcome Brian from Schneider to say a few words. Hey, thank you all for being here. Um, I wish I had a voice as cool as that guy's, but I do not. Um, but just wanted to share how excited we are at Schneider to help sponsor this, um, because you may not know we are also a startup. Um, so Schneider started, a man with a third grade education sold his family car and bought his first truck to start chasing his dream. Fast forward 90 years, and we're a $6 billion company uh, servicing all of North America. So that's why we at Schneider um, understand the importance of entrepreneurship and the innovator's mindset, and why we're so proud to sponsor this event tonight with Junior Achievement. So thank you, Junior Achievement. Thank you, founders, uh, friends and family, um, judges, we're looking forward to a great night. So thank you for being here. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, in addition to Schneider, we'd like to recognize Oshkosh Corp for your continued support and Quick Trip, who was our dinner sponsor tonight. Um, you all didn't get to see it, but we fed the kids before they started. So, um, so we're excited to, to have Quick Trip involved this year as well. Uh, special thanks to Fox Valley Technical College pro for providing their video expertise and for the Department of Transport, er, sorry, the Department of Public Instruction uh, for supporting JA to promote entrepreneurship in the state of Wisconsin. Our Audience Choice Award is brought to you by the Green Bay Packers Give Back Foundation and Humana. This award has been decided by voters uh, to the kids' Facebook pages. So they each went out. Uh, and posted on their Facebook and asked friends, family, fellow students, and other folks to vote on their video that they submitted for the competition. So again, the vi finalists for this uh, received the most likes on Facebook and will receive an additional $500 prize. So make sure you stick around to the end and hear who wins our Audience Choice Award. Uh, enough of me talking, now let's get to our first presenter. From Shawano, Wisconsin, his name is Isaac Johnson, and he is the founder of Isaac's Pumpkins. Hi, my name is Isaac Johnson. I am a pumpkin farmer. In third grade, during COVID, I was stuck at home. So we decided to plant 20 pumpkins. 
then the next year when I was in fourth grade, I decided that we would plant 320 hills. The year after that, we planted 500 hills. The pumpkins that I grow are planted, sprayed, and fertilized all by hand. The varieties that I have are bumpy, pink, yellow, blue, like a cream color. I sell my pumpkins at the Shano Farmer's Market, a roadside stand, and then I invite people out to our farm. I know that you need to work hard to be successful. Growing pumpkins is a time commitment. One of the biggest problems I face is bugs invading my patch. One of the things that makes my business unique is I let past customers shoot pick pumpkins before I take them to the farmer's market. My main source, my only source of income is from my pumpkins. My biggest expenses are fertilizer, the seeds, and bug spray. My pumpkin sales in 2021 were good, but not great. In 2022, weed invasion and bugs really hurt my sales of pumpkins. The lack of pumpkins hurt my profit in pumpkins. I made a, around $200 in pumpkin profit. Changes for next year include putting cow manure on my pumpkin patch to have but for in hope for better pumpkin growth. I learned from another local pumpkin farmer that putting a pre-emergent on your field a day after you plant kills all the weeds, but not the pumpkins. At the farmer's market in Shano, I talk and educate my customers on how I grow my pumpkins. Also new this year, at the end of the season at my roadside stand, instead of having a price tag on my remaining pumpkins, we asked for donations to SAM 25, which is a warming shelter in my community since to give back to the community since they had been so supportive of me. Thank you for watching my story on my pumpkins. Hi, my name is Isaac Johnson and I am a pumpkin farmer. I never intended for this to be a business. It started out as a hobby. My mom posted some pictures on Facebook and people were interested in buying them. That's when I realized this could be more than a hobby. Before I bought seeds, I did some research on if others in the area sold pumpkins, sold unique pumpkins, and there really wasn't. I knew there was a demand for unique pumpkins. I also discovered that the pink, blue, and yellow pumpkins are harder to grow. Although you can charge more for these kinds of pumpkins, you can't grow as many due to the germination rate. I found that I still need to grow some orange pumpkins. I'm doing an experiment right now. As you can see right here, seeds from unique pumpkins are quite expensive. So I've har harvested last year's seeds from some, of, I've harvested some of last year's seeds. I've dried them. I planted a few varieties to test out which ones would germinate. This could be a cost savings for me. In 2021, my expenses were $531.68. That year, I had to buy all my irrigation equipment. Pumpkins need an excessive amount of water daily. The summer rainfall isn't always enough. My sales that year were $592.10. In 2022, my expenses were $409.80. My sales that year were $686.17. Lack of germinations and, and challenges with pests hurt my crop. Therefore, I didn't have as many to sell as I had planned on. Lack of germination and nutrients being removed from the soil the year before hurt my crop hurt my crop. This spring, I need to replenish the soil and we'll be adding, spreading manure from our beef farm onto the field. If 
If I receive the scholarship, my plan is to use the money to purchase a large sprayer to apply the pre-emergent. This is an, another local pumpkin farmer has recommended this to kill the weeds, but it will also help the, not only will it help the pumpkins be, be able to grow better, it will keep the pests away that live in the weeds. This has been another one of my challenges. Thank you to Junior Achievement for hosting this event and promoting entrepreneurship. Go ahead. So <clears throat> what was your greatest challenge in starting the business and did you overcome it? And if so, how did you overcome it? Um, well, probably my biggest challenge was really the the first year I had a excessive amount of pests, and it really took a lot of spraying and uh, just tending to them to keep the bug population under control. Great job, Isaac, and thank you for being here tonight and sharing your story. Um, oftentimes companies are able to grow when they figure out how to work with and through others. So I'm wondering if you could hire anybody to help you and have your first employee, what would that employee do to help you in your business? Um, probably one of the things would be um, just spraying. It takes a really long time to spray, like a couple days just to do the field one round. Mm -hmm. And then you have to start right back over. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. When it comes to sales, do you typically sell them individually or in bulk? Uh, all of my sales so far have been individual pumpkins. Well, not all, but the majority. And have you ever tried to reach out to schools or cafeterias or company and selling pumpkins to them? Or is this something you didn't really expand on yet? Um, I haven't done that. The closest thing to that that I've done is uh, sold to a church and for a wedding. Do you have any other questions? Um, who is your biggest competitor right now in the area? Um, well, there is uh, another pumpkin farmer right up the road who does a lot of pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's like on a major road, so a lot of that traffic goes to him. Great job. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Isaac. I'm now pleased to introduce our next finalist, Maya Wiltzis from Fond du Lac High School. Here's Breezy Hill Stables and E&M Wellness LLC. Welcome to the stage, Maya. Hi, everyone. My name is Maya Wiltzis, and I'm an equine entrepreneur. I am a certified MagnaWave practitioner and the owner of Breezy Hill Stables where I offer horseback riding lessons and wagon rides. My businesses began because I love sharing my passion for horse horses with others, which led me to using my horses in my business. Ian and Wellness began because I saw my horses working hard for me and I wanted to do something that would benefit them. Currently, e and Wellness only offers MagnaWave services, but I have the hope of offering massage in the spring. I was chosen as a finalist for a scholarship for a massage certification and will take advantage. This business can be taken anywhere as I can easily roll my machine right into a stall by a horse or in a barn or at a show. As I said before, Breezy Hill Stables offers two services, horseback riding lessons and wagon rides. This began in 2018 at my family's campground with one horse and one wagon. We are now giving wagon rides at many social events like Sturgeon Spectacular held in my town for Sturgeon Spearing and at a local winery. We also partake in many different events like parades and are often asked to haul Santa. For example, this was this year in the Fond du Lac Christmas Parade. 
We are now able to offer double the amount of rides with the addition of two horses in the past two years and the addition of another wagon. This has led us to do many more of these events, even having to turn away some people. My five-year plan includes increasing the number of hours of wagon rides provided at the current events that we do and also adding a few private events such as weddings. Most of our outside events take place in the winter as our horses get shown in the summer. My horseback riding lesson business was inspired by my first horse, which is the horse you see here. He inspired me to share my love of teaching and my passion of horses with anyone I could. The business started with five students in 2019, but I now have 10 weekly students with two lesson horses. The ages of my students range from two to 16. I have also started many of these students and they have learned all that they know about horses from me. And I'm very proud of that. My lesson business is currently weather dependent as I can't give lessons in the winter because I only have an outdoor arena. I have a few students that will come in the winter to brush horses and go for trail rides, but the majority of my business happens during the summer. Now let's talk about what ENM Wellness currently offers, which is MagnaWave PMF. MagnaWave is pulse electromagnetic field therapy that gets down to the cellular level on people and animals to help oxygenate the blood, reduce inflammation, relieve stress, and get the body back to overall wellness. You can see here that this horse's muscles are twitching. This indicates soreness or inflammation, and as the twitching lessens, that's how you know the MagnaWave is working. The tubes that emit the pulse can be put anywhere on your body. As you see here, the MagnaWave tubes are on Hale's head, helping with relief of pole pressure. You can tell that a horse is liking what's happening by yawning, seen here by Cole and Jilly, but also the relaxed look in their eyes. Releases like this let us practitioners know that we are doing something right and making the horse feel better. Although this is a very new business, I made it a point to get out and start promoting my business. This is through different shows that I've been to and creating flyers for them and going to different tax swap events where I can talk to people about my business. Lastly, I have Facebook pages for e and Wellness and Brizzy Hill Stables that I add posts to weekly about updates, promotions, and what is going on in my businesses. I know what you're all thinking, where's the horse? Well, I didn't think bringing a 2,000 pound animal in today was the best idea, so these pictures will have to do. On the top there, you can see three of my Percheron horses. From the left to the right is Ace, Breezy, and Onyx, and I don't know where Cole is in that picture, probably somewhere off to the right. And in the bottom picture is um, George that I'm sitting on, and Tigger on the right, who was my first horse. These are my boys, and they take all of my time, pretty much. Um, I wake up every morning before school, take care of them, come home after a long day of work, and make sure they're fed and exercised and are all feeling good. The initial costs of these businesses were provided by my parents, but I now do all of the marketing, the scheduling, and the um, getting the services for the MagnaWave and, um, and providing my lessons. For e and Wellness, the initial cost was $10,500 for the machine, the certification class that I participated in, and the insurance. After one, about a year, the machine is currently 20% paid off, uh, and my customers are usually returning other than those that I see at different horse shows. This has also saved us $3,060 from not having to pay someone to MagnaWave my horses. This year, I plan to go to four more shows in addition to the same shows I went to last year offering the MagnaWave services, totaling 11 for the year. I, hope, or I plan that in two years, this machine will be paid off, which is about $8,400 to go. The wagon ride program at Breezy Hill started with one horse and one wagon in 2018. We were able to give 20 people, about 20 people wagon rides on a weekend. After five years, the sales have gone up 16% with no change in price, but the addition of a horse and another wagon. We have kept this price the same because I like talking to the people about the horses and providing a, 
another activity for our campers at the campground. The an, an increase in price for this business would be from two to five dollars per person per ride. One, right now, it's about five dollars, or it is five dollars per person for a 15-minute ride around the campground. The horses cost a lot, and one of our biggest expenses that has gone up is our hay. Right now, or last year, we were paying sixty dollars for a round bale of hay, and this week we just got more hay, which was now seventy dollars a round bale. And our horses go through one and a half of these per week. In 2021, the profit from, or the, the income from the wagon ride business was $1,680, and in 2022, it was $2,000. I also mentioned in my video that we went to event, an event in my community called Surgeon Spectacular. Last year, this event brought in $600, and this year, it's, predi it's predicted to bring in $1,750 without tips. Ziegler Winery also approached us at Breezy Hill, and we this year so far we've done eight events out there, three hours each, totaling six thousand nine hundred dollars. And this is um, expected to double in 2023, as they approached us to be out there one weekend in the summer, and then every weekend starting in October. Right now, with the businesses, I can pay for the feed farrier service and vet bills listed on the brochure that or the a flyer that you got um, along with the totals on the income statement. Now for my lesson business. In 2019 I began with five weekly lessons and one lesson horse. This past year I was giving 10 weekly lessons with two horses. This is $30 an hour and I focus on private lessons because I believe that was the best education for my students. This business runs April to November because of the weather, and I do not currently have an indoor arena. An indoor arena, we were quoted for an indoor arena, which was $250,000. <laughs> um, besides that, there is little growth that I can do with my lesson business other than getting more horses. This summer, I also sponsored two horseless horse girls in my 4-H program, which means they don't have horses, and I taught them how to show, care for, groom, everything they needed to know about horses to show at our county fair, and that all that time was volunteered. My goal with all of my businesses is to share my passion for my horses and make other horses feel better. Thank you, Maya. Very interesting that you have different revenue streams within your business. So very, very nice to see that. What would the the, the cash prize, if you were to win today, what, what would you do with that as far as investing that in your business? Where would that go? Yeah, so the E&M Wellness business, um, the, as you can see here, this is one attachment that can be used on people, horses, dogs. Um, but I would like to get a box, it's called a hoof box, so the horses can stay in their front feet on it, and that sends the pulse through their feet because a lot of horses get abscesses because of the weather. Um, that can help with that. I would also like to upgrade my equipment for my lesson horses, which is like their tack, um, so that money would go towards that as well. Thank you. All right, great overview, really appreciate it. Um, you know, a lot of times with startups, the founder is more important than the idea itself. Mm -hmm. Um, so can you talk to us a little bit about what you bring to the table as a founder? Yeah, so um, these were all started because I loved doing them and I wanted to share them with others. So it wasn't really intended that I started these businesses. Um, like the lesson program, I started with one student because she approached me. And then from there, it was just kind of word of mouth for all the rest of my students. Um, and with, the, with actually all of them, it's been word of mouth being able to... Um, advertise them. But then the ENM wellness was I wanted my horses to um, get better as I was paying someone else to do it. And then I was like, well, I really like to do this and I want to share this with others. Great. Great initiative. Thank you. So what is the biggest obstacle that you feel your business has had to overcome to this point? So for ENM wellness, it's finding those clients that are coming back because I like going to shows with my horses and that's where I find a lot of my clients, but they're often not around me. Um, but I am going to like different barns where I'm adding on horses as I go there. Um, and then for the horseback riding lesson business, the 
challenges have always been the weather and like especially because the heat the horses can't work in the heat um, in the rain and I only have an outdoor place for them to work so so when you think about your ability to grow your revenue mm -hmm. are, are you the only employee currently yes Okay. Are you thinking of extending to other employees to do more shows, or how are you thinking about your growth? Yeah, so um, I also, my, so it's e &M Wellness because my sister is Emma, and her name is on the card because she got certified as well, but I'm the only one currently running the business. Um, but we can also, we've also thought about getting another machine so both of us could have it in our location, different locations and have the same company name but offering the services in different parts. Is this a business you'd like to continue far into the future? How, I, I guess, how far do you see yourself taking a business like this? Yeah, so I'm a senior right now, so I plan to take the Magnoive business with me to college, as you can find clients, and it's an easy part-time job. I know a lot of people who do that. Um, and then coming home on the weekends to do the lesson business, and then in the winter and the summer, showing my horses and taking them to different events to offer wagon rides. Thank Great. you. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Maya. Great presentation. Uh, now, we, I have the honor of introducing you to our third contestant, uh, Gabe's Bike Repair from De Pere, Wisconsin. Here's Gabe Hansen. Hi, I'm Gabe, and I started and own Gabe's Bike Repair. I've always loved cycling. I ride in group rides and I'm part of a youth triathlon team. I love racing or riding for fun. I also enjoy learning about the latest updates in biking technology. Because of this, I spent a lot of time tinkering with my bike. Eventually, I gained enough knowledge and experience to fix other people's bikes as well. My business is based out of my home. With six other bike shops in the area, I have to offer a unique experience for my customers. I have found that I can do most repairs a bike shop can, but at a lower price point. Another unique thing about my business is that I am able to work with my customers to pick up or deliver their bikes, as well as perform mobile repairs. I communicate directly with every customer. When I do a job that requires new parts, I speak with the customer to make sure that they understand that the parts will be included in the final price. I always make sure to call or text each customer when the job is done. Restate the agreed upon price and thank them for their business. My business began in summer of 2021 with five bikes. To gain experience, I offered free repair services and many customers chose to make a donation. That first summer, I made $50. As I gained confidence in my abilities, I created a service and price list to offer customers when they inquired. This past year, I was able to work on 19 bikes with 12 different customers. In 2022, I made over $300. In this next year, I hope to more than double that amount. One obstacle I face in growing my business is the wide variety of knowledge needed to repair all kinds of bikes. Because of the variety of bikes, from fat tire bikes to mountain bikes to road bikes to recumbents, all with different technologies such as disc brakes, hydraulic brakes, electronic shifting, carbon frames, dropper posts, shocks, and other new components, I have a lot of learning yet to do. As I learn to repair bikes more efficiently, I plan to develop social media and local marketing for my business. When I come across a new repair challenge, I typically look in a bike repair manual or find a video online. Additionally, I have at times walked into our local bike shop and asked the mechanics there for help. They have always been very helpful and have shown me what to do. I often purchase parts and tools from them in return. Different styles of bikes and higher-end bikes require more precise tools to be able to service them properly. In order to grow my business, I need to acquire a wider variety of tools such as a torque wrench, professional wheel train stand, repair stand, cassette pliers, and a chain checker. I also have looked into bicycle mechanic classes to further my knowledge. My long-term goal is to one day own my own bike shop fixing and selling bikes for people. I'm Gabe Hansen, and this is my business, Gabe's Bike Repair. I've always loved bikes, riding bikes, racing bikes, even building bikes. I'm also passionate about helping others love biking. Biking is good for people's health, their relationship, and it's really great for our planet, too. 
I want to be able to help others love biking, and one of the best ways to do that is to make sure that they have a bike that works properly and is fun to ride. Routine bike maintenance is a necessary service in my community, especially Wisconsin. Rain, heat, salt, and snow all contribute to bicycle damage. In order to keep a bike in proper condition, the average American needs to spend around $100 per year. However, not all people want to spend that much. Fixing bikes is not always easy, and most people look to an expert when it comes to repairing their bike. That's where I come in. I want to fix people's bikes and get them cycling for an affordable price. Being involved in my community is also very important to me. I'm part of a Friday morning group ride and a youth triathlon team. I'm also involved with My Team Triumph. My Team Triumph is a nonprofit organization that helps people with disabilities be a part of the race community. I've been involved in many events, either pushing a captain in a cart or pulling them behind my bike. More importantly, I enjoy the relationships I build with the people I meet through MTT. As a part of my business, I donate 10% of all my profits to My Team Triumph. This past year, I donated $81. I also, I also started a fundraising page for them and raised over $500. Currently, I have two bikes that I'm working on. This month alone, I have had customers reach out about seven other bikes and I'm working on a time to coordinate those repairs. As you can see, I'm already well on my way to, reading my, to reaching my 2023 goals of over $600. However, in order to reach my projected goals, here's what I need to do. First, I need to take on better quality tools. I need to acquire a professional grade bike stand so I can work on more than one bike at a time. I also need a torque wrench. A torque wrench is extremely necessary, especially in working on carbon bikes. A torque wrench lets me see exactly how tight I'm tightening everything, this lets me, and this lets me know that I'm not cracking the frame. Another item I need is a portable workbench. This would help me save space in my basement workshop and take my repair services on the road. I've also looked into furthering my knowledge to perform more complex and unique tasks by taking on bicycle mechanic classes. The best one is United Bicycle Institute in Oregon. There are also local park tool classes here in, in, in Minnesota. These classes could cost up to $1,500 for a five-day session, but they'd let me learn additional skills such as press fitting a bottom bracket or lacing a wheel. That's why I'm here. I love biking. I love fixing bikes, and I want other people to enjoy riding as well. I can do that. That's what I'm passionate about. But I need your investment to take me to the next level. Thank you. Gabe, super cool business. Um, so how, how have you acquired your customers so far? Like, what tactics have you tried? So both my parents are teachers. So when I first started, I created a flyer and actually put it in the teacher's room at my mom's school. And so that first year, a lot of my customers, and still are a lot of my customers, have been teachers and my parents' colleagues. Cool. Um, <clears throat> how is the market for bikes in your area, and how is it compared to other areas in Wisconsin and throughout the country? So in the, in the Green Bay area, we have six bike shops. And so, I mean, Obviously, if you go into a smaller town, there's less, but like Madison area and Milwaukee is a really big biking culture, so there's more. However, like for this area though, we have quite a few. And so, I mean, being able to market around that has been a little difficult, trying to get customers to come to a kid instead of a professional shop. I'm sure your business goes in cycles, <laughs> <laughs> but when are you most busy? Definitely spring and summer. Early spring, a lot of people are looking to start riding, and so they realize that maybe something happened in the fall and they just didn't bring it in, or some like maybe it got damaged sitting in the winter, or something fell on it, or they just haven't been riding, but they want to start again now that the weather's getting r nice. And so spring and summer uh, really kind of is when I'm getting most of my business. So I've seen a lot more electric bike, bikes recently, and I was wondering, do you have expertise in that as well? And that, is that something you want to expand to? So that I currently, I have never worked on an electric bike. I've never had that with my customers. 
but and it depends what you would want fixed. If it's just a basic something that'd be on a normal bike, say like gears or a wheel or a chain, I could do that. If it has to do with the battery or the motor, I haven't done any of that. That's not my expertise, but I I look forward to figuring out how to do that. So you kind of talked about a few upcoming expenses, things that you would um, potentially spend the twenty five hundred on. But can you clarify a little bit more? Like, what would if you won the twenty five hundred? What would you spend that on? So really, more tools. Right now, I'm using my family's tools. We have tools in our basement, but I'd like to take on better and more specific tools because we have tools that'll do it that are more general shop tools. But to get a bike specific tool would be really nice. We have a couple, and so I'd have my own tools, like I mentioned, a torque wrench is very important, and another bike stand so that I can have multiple bikes that I take on. Have you heard of fix-it sticks? No. No, okay. Um, look it up because right. <laughs> I think it'll help you in um, um, the repairs that you're doing and also uh, to connect with a local entrepreneur who makes fix-it sticks, who invented them. They're made for bikers like you and the adults and your customers that you're working with. And that might be something you want to add to your toolbox to help you. And if you'd like, you can follow up with me and I'll introduce you to the owner of that company because I think he should be a sponsor of you in some way. Maybe he can uh, let you try out some fix-it sticks and see if it adds to the efficiency. Yeah. Um, but with that, have you thought about other partners that you could work with to help you in your business? Yeah, so right now actually, one of the local bike shops in my area, the one that's actually closest to me, I know the owners and the people that work there very well. So like, if ever I have a couple times this summer, if I don't know exactly what to do, I can walk into the bike shop and they'll actually just teach me how to do it. And so they're kind of like training me how to fix bikes. Excellent, thank you. I'm good. Right. Thanks, Gabe. All right, now on to our final presentation. We are going to bring up Yum Yum to talk about Yum Yum cinnamon rolls. So we'll get Aaron's video going right now. Hello everyone, I'm Aaron Van Den Havel, owner of Yum Yum Rolls, LLC, and we specialize in deliciousness. Yum Yum Rolls are ooey, gooey, stuffed with cinnamon, and smothered in caramel. In the sixth grade, we read a book called A Long Walk to Water. This book depicts the poor water conditions in South Sudan, and I was very moved and wanted to help. During the same time, my grandma passed away, and she made the best caramel rolls in the world, so I wanted to make her recipe to put in her casket as a sending off gift. Uh, my mom posted a picture of me making these caramel rolls on Facebook, and someone asked if they would like to buy some. So we thought, wow, what a good way to honor my grandma, donate to this charity, and make my own business. Let's talk business. Yum Yum Rolls are curbside pickup on Sundays from Green Bay to Oshkosh. It is $20 for a dozen, $10 for half a dozen. Interestingly enough, we've made it to over state lines. Now I bet you're wondering, the Yum Yum Rolls is rolling in the dough. Well, I'm happy to report that Yum Yum Rolls is a sweet success. Our first year's sales were $3,200. Our second year's sales were $4,500, which is a year over year increase of 40%. Of a sale, cost of goods sold is $5. $5 goes to Water for South Sudan and $10 is profit. Some future growth potentials that we have is that we currently only sell on Sundays, but we could open that up to weekdays. Yum Yum Rolls has a strong social media presence on Facebook and Instagram at Yum Yum Rolls, the number four charity. And we have our own website, yumyumrolls.com. 
challenges, or well, we've had challenges that would put businesses up in smoke. Shortly after our one year anniversary, we had a house fire. And we moved four, uh, in four weeks, we moved four times in four different ovens. Do you know how inconsistent ovens can be? Fortunately, we have been taken in by Artistic Cakes and Cookies, a local bakery in Appleton, and so I can continue doing what I love. As a young entrepreneur, I have been fortunate enough to have been interviewed three times on the news, one live and one statewide. I've also been featured in several regional publications. I am thrilled to have raised $8,100 for Water for South Sudan. I am the second leading individual fundraiser globally for the charity. Also, during the 20th anniversary of 9-11, I gave Yum Yum Rolls to all fire and police stations from Green Bay to Nina. Now, I love my pets, so I partnered with Thank You From The Heart to give them some special deliveries. I'm sure by now you have recognized that I have all the ingredients to be your next young entrepreneur. Now that you've had a flavor of my business, I'd like to give you a taste on how it runs. So judges, pick up your earphones that are on your table um, and uh, open up email and email me at yumyumrolls at yahoo.com. Put your first name and your order, which is half a dozen yum yum rolls. Click send, head into your inbox, and you will receive a confirmation email from us stating the time of pickup, which is 7.45 to 8.15 and our Appleton East location's address are, uh, and a Venmo link if that's how you'd like to pay, or you can pay with cash at Carside Pickup. We do our Appleton East location uh, weekly, our Green Bay monthly, and our Oshkosh quarterly. We accept email applications by Friday at 8 p.m. Um, now, Saturday rolls around, and I make your rolls, uh, prepare them, and have them rise overnight. Sunday morning, I put them in the oven and I bake them um, so they're ready for you on Sunday. Well, look, judges, it's Sunday. I have your order. Uh, so drive on over to the Appleton East location and I'll be waiting there for you. I to address you all as one um, customer because I have a marketing spiel that I'm going to give to you all. Thank you for your order. Uh, please post a picture of you and your family enjoying these on face, uh, uh, social media and tag us in it and give these two marketing cards to someone who may enjoy Yum Yum Rolls. Currently, we only sell on Sunday, but our business uh, expansion idea is to open that up to weekdays and summer's far summer farmers markets. This $2,500 would really help because then we can get the licensing and insurance for uh, these farmers markets. 10% would go to charity and the rest to my college because I'm planning on using Yum Yum Rolls to continue baking to graduate college debt free. I'm a busy 13 year old in the eighth grade I do wrestling, basketball, track, and cross country. Now I have to do all these sports because I love eating the extra yum yum rolls. Here's to rising to the top and rolling in the dough. Yum yum. You've shared an awful lot about your business with us so far, but what I'm wondering is when you close your eyes at night and you're going to sleep thinking about your business, what's your big, hairy, audacious goal? Like if you could do whatever you wanted and see yourself in the future with your business, what would that look like? Um, definitely keeping the business going uh, and becoming hopefully a multi-store, like uh, big 
company mm -hmm. um, and also continuing with that charitable act because I'm planning on every time I entrepreneur uh, and keep on going to always have a charitable act in there. First off, I appreciate the puns. Like those are, you're well on your way to dad joke um, <laughs> hall of fame. Um, but it's obvious from your presentation, you have some technology and some marketing skills. So I was curious, how did you learn you know, those pieces and how they could support your business? Um, well, I have, uh, like for the video, I used a program that we learned about in school. So uh, just from school or um, friends, family, being able to, uh, definitely get that my name out there and using social media and different things to help with that. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. What makes your product unique, Aaron? Like what makes it different from other roles on the market? Well, um, first of all, it has that love in there and that's that you won't get from buying something from a store. Um, and also it's my grandma's secret recipe. So there's nothing really quite out uh, like that out there. Mm -hmm. I think you mentioned you're using a oven at a local bakery. Yes. So are you having to pay them for that? Is that a long-term arrangement? How, how did you work that? And what do you think about that going forward? Um, they uh, are actually uh, very kind and let us uh, use that for free. Um, of course, we do help out around the bakery and clean up. Okay. And do you see going forward continuing to use that or? Yes, it's been uh, very efficient to use their oven because uh, before we can maybe do like one to two at a time in our home oven, mm -hmm. but this we can do six uh, at a time. Okay, great. Thank you. And I know you've talked a little bit about your goals and, and again, where you'd like to see your business grow, but how would you use today's prize winnings to help you in growing your business? Um, definitely getting out there in the farmer's market and being able to uh, get that licensing and insurance so we can get more customers and be uh, maybe more like uh, out there so people can definitely be more efficient to getting those yum yum rolls just right away. As you're learning, it's taking a lot of different skill sets to be successful running your business, right? Mm -hmm. So which skill do you think is helping you the most right now that you have? Um, definitely being like extroverted and out there and um, always having a smiling uh, smile on my face so you can wake up with some yum yum rolls and a nice smile in the morning. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Aaron. With the conclusion of our final presentation, uh, our judges are going to go and deliberate now. And I'd like to draw your attention to uh, our Audience Choice Award sponsored by the Packers Give Back. So again, this individual will earn an additional $500 cash prize. Uh, so viewers have voted on the Northeast Wisconsin JA Facebook page and we've tallied the number of votes for each video. And now I'd like to announce the winner, based on the number of likes, is Gabe Hansen. Congratulations, <laughs> Gabe. We'll, we'll shake hands. Congratulations. All right, so before we check in with our judges uh, and our and get a, uh, a finalist, a, a winner for this year's, we'd like to check in with our 2022 Young Entrepreneur Live Champion. They are out of North Fond du Lac High School. And this is our status update on last year's winner, comma, an all-natural air freshener company. What started as a class project for two high school students in North Fond du Lac has now exceeded all expectations. The product is now being sold in local salons and stores and will soon have a place on the shelves of Festival Foods. Aiden Fowler and Lillian Geckerman's business stemmed from an idea for a sophomore class project. I suffer from allergies and I get a really bad reaction from common air fresheners. And so we came up with the idea, comma, and it's an all natural air freshener. 
another big part of like why we created it was because, well, for me, football gear smells disgusting. The line of air fresheners, car diffusers, and essential oils. Well, bamboo is always my favorite. Is made with all plant-based ingredients. The students have worked their product into local businesses and stores. And it'll soon be on the shelves of Festival Foods. But getting to this sweet spot was not all roses. Being 17 years old, starting when we were 15, it's no one really takes you 100% seriously. And as their business grew, the community began to rally around them. We're in athletics, so people see us during sporting events and they're like, oh, so what's happening? Like, what's new? Any new scents? The community watched the young entrepreneurs as they pitched their idea to sponsors and secured thousands of dollars. Everyone knows our entire pitch. They've all heard it. We were taking a test and I was done with the test and I was watching it. And out of nowhere, it's just, Lily, what's that smell? And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Their teacher says the company serves as an inspiration to other students. They've got the drive to be able to, to put this together, um, and they're just great humans on top of that, so it, it's like proud dad moment. Fowler and Geckerman say they hope to expand to all festival food locations in the Midwest by March, then try to sell at Kroger. In North Fond du Lac, I'm Margaret Cahill, NBC26. All right, so we're back, and we're ready to give our award for the night. Before we do that, though, I have one more thank you that I'd like to do. Um, I want to thank both Liz Hosel and Jen Van Thiel for being our mentors for the students uh, for this competition. They each reached out to stu two students each, uh, kind of ran through their pitch with them, helped them feel a little bit more comfortable about this evening. So really, thank you very much for your help with that. Uh, and then also, uh, we have a few board members here tonight, and I want to thank them for their continued support of JA and, and the programs that we do, and, and thank you very much for being here tonight and, and supporting these students. Now, it's time for me to give the microphone to Brian, so we can go ahead with awarding our winner for the evening. Um, so, on behalf of all the judges, just wanted to say what an awesome job you guys did. Um, you know, that was very hard to talk through kind of differences and, and positives on all of yours because you did a fantastic job. And I think, you know, we look at you and are super optimistic about the future and know that whatever you guys choose to do, you're going to be successful. So very nice job. Very well done. Um, yeah, that was just fantastic. So great job. Um, so as we deliberated, we, we talked through things like the business growth. We talked through your marketing plans, you know, how you address challenges, how you understood your market, um, how you connected to the community. Those are all things that, that um, you know, went into our deliberation and, and led us to an answer. Um, and yeah, it was you know, a, a tough, tough deliberation because you guys all did fantastic. And what made us feel better is that everyone's walking away with something. I think that's an important part of this. So fantastic job. Um, anything you'd like to add? Way to go. <laughs> yeah, so on behalf of your judges, great job. And then Adam, if you want to name the winner. All right. I feel a little like Vanna White here. My dress isn't as nice, though. So, all right, our winner of the 2023 Young Entrepreneur Competition for the Northeast Region and moving on to the statewide competition in February is Yum Yum. Congratulations, Aaron. So here is your award. Congratulations. I'll let you go and grab a big check. And, and we'll do pictures afterwards with you. Um, if you can find that at, or find a place to put that at your seat, you can take that back with you. And, and then, um, as, as Brian mentioned, you guys are all amazing. I, I don't envy you guys, the judges, having to, to pick a winner. Um, and nobody's going home empty-handed. So we're really excited to be able to give you each uh, $1,000 to take back and use at your company. <laughs> and especially excited because we know you're going to do amazing things with them. So um, I'd like to give each of you your certificate for $1,000. So, Isaac. Thank you. 
congratulations, buddy. And Maya. Congratulations, Maya. And Gabe. Congratulations. All right, so congratulations, uh, Aaron, on your $2,500 win. Uh, I think I can speak for everybody in here when I say you guys are all amazing. Uh, it was a lot of fun to see you present tonight. Uh, again, I know I told you all beforehand, um, but I'll say it on camera, I would not have had the guts to do what you guys did tonight when I was your age, and I'm very impressed with all of you, and you should be very proud of what you accomplished tonight. So what a great night it's been. I'd like to thank you for enjoying us for this extraordinary display of student entrepreneurship. I'd like to say thank you to all of our celebrity judges. I, we appreciate you taking out your time tonight to, to be with us. Thank you again to our sponsors, Schneider, uh, Quick Trip for sponsoring the food. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Green Bay Packers Give Back and Humana for the uh, Audience Choice Award, uh, and also Oshkosh Corp for their support of this event and many others at JA. And I hope that you all have a very safe drive home and a wonderful night. Thank you very much.